Hello folks, this is Sula once again. Welcome to another video for League of Legends, or to be more accurate, for Teamfight Tactics. Those of you that follow my stuff probably know that I haven't been playing League of Legends in a while. I kind of got a little bit tired with League of Legends gameplay, but I actually have been watching a lot of Teamfight Tactics on livestream, and I figured, you know what? I have watched a lot of the people who are at the top of the ladder play this game, and this is a game that doesn't rely on reflexes or, or the ability to, like, attack move. This is a game that's mostly about strategy. So, hey, maybe I could be good at this game. And I decided to give it a, a little bit of a whirl. Now, I did put one team fight tactics recorded game recorded off my live stream up on this uh, YouTube channel in, a little while ago. But this one, I actually know what I'm doing as opposed to just fooling around. So I'm going to go ahead and use this video to talk about team fight tactics in general. I'm going to assume that people watching this have no idea what team fight tactics is and talk a little bit about how the game works. And then we'll, of course, get into the specifics of how this particular game ended up playing out. I am not an expert at team fight tactics. I've actually played three games total. Um, in like the last since I came back and started doing this. Um, I have done pretty well in those three games, but again, I am not an expert. So keep that in mind. And if you're watching this like a year or two after it's recorded, of course, the metagame is going to be very different then. So whatever I'm saying is based on what the current metagame is as I record this video. <clears throat> so Teamfight Tactics is basically a card game. It's kind of a strategy game. Um, I wouldn't say that dissimilar to something like Hearthstone, but it, of course, uses League of Legends champions as effectively its cards. You form teams out of the League of Legends champions, and then you fight against the teams that the other players put together. So every game starts with this, with the carousel. You will have to pick which champ you want, and I see Lulu with a BF sword, and I immediately grab her. Usually here on the first carousel, you want to pick based on what item you want, because the item is more important than the champion, and I'll talk more about items as the game goes on. I wanted Lulu because she came with a BF sword, and the BF sword is, in the current metagame, generally considered to be one of the strongest items you can get, because it turned, it builds into a bunch of very useful items. All right, so this is the general setup for Teamfight Tactics. You do not actually do anything during the actual combat. You just set up your team. Once the combat starts, it's completely automated. You don't control it at all. There's no reflexes or anything like that. I'm just watching what's going on. And the game always starts with three rounds against minions. So uh, I actually get another BF sword. I was like, oh boy, this is, this is a good start here. BF swords lean towards, obviously, comps that are based on physical damage and often assassin setups. So this is how everything every round starts. You will get five champion cards at the bottom of the screen. You can see the cost of them. They uh, Here at the beginning of the game, they all cost one gold. And then you build your team based on what champions you purchase. Now, each champion has two or very rarely three different attributes. You'll see these different things on the side. So for example, Lulu is Yordle and Sorcerer. Fiora is Blade Master Noble. And based on what champions you get, you end up getting various bonuses. So I actually go ahead and sell Lulu and I end up putting in two Fioras, which is not ideal. You generally don't want to double up champions very often because uh, note that even though I have two Fioras, which are Noble and Blade Master, I do not get Noble and Blade Master twice. I can only get that once from Fiora being in the game. You can also see how items combine together. You can combine two items together, two basic items to get a kind of an upper tier item. And you can also combine three champions together to upgrade them from one star to two stars. So I had three Fioras, and that allows me to get a two star Fiora. So that's kind of the other basic thing. You can also get a three star unit, but it's pretty rare to do that. Uh, you actually need nine of the champion to get a three star unit. So you can do it, uh, and there are some strategies based around that, but it's usually not a great idea to do that. So what do I have here? At the start of the game, you usually just want to get a bunch of champions during these three minion rounds, just like buy whatever you can. And then basically based on what you roll, you form a, uh, a team out of it. So like I picked up the Fioras because I had three of them. And I've also gone ahead and picked up a Warwick and a Nidalee. Uh, both Nidalee and Warwick are wild. Nidalee is wild shapeshifter. Warwick is wild and um, brawler. So I get, because I have two wild units in there, I end up getting the wild buff. You can actually see they have the little glowing orange sparks around their hands. Wild is you get extra attack speed. Uh, you get like extra attack speed for each attack and I think you can stack a couple times. But uh, wild means extra attack speed, so that's the buff I have. Fiora does not get anything because Fiora is noble and blademaster. And note that I need three nobles to get something with her and I need three blademasters 
alternately, and I don't have any of that. I've also just picked up some other units. Now, the, the big purchase I made this round was I went ahead and picked up Shivana, who is a shapeshifter. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go into shapeshifters this game. That's what I seem to be getting. I'm going to go shapeshifters and then go with wild. So I'm up against someone called Relaxed Bear, who is um has actually leveled to four which i'll talk more about in a second so i'm trying to win this round but look oh fiora she's reposting against the wrong person she needs to repost against nidalee so she actually does finish off nidalee but then she gets finished off by blitzcrank in turn i should also mention that champions have mana anytime you attack or take damage your mana bar fills up and when it fills up your champion uses an ability so for example if Fiora's ability is repost when her mana bar fills up she will repost and counter basically she blocks an attack and then counter attacks warwick will use his ultimate if you're familiar with um so you can see when his bar his mana bar fills up he will uh you know jump on top of the person and ult then nidalee when her bar fills up she will transform which is what shapeshifters do and note that now since i haven't gotten any of the additional triss I just go ahead and sell them, and you can see I'm going into Wild plus Shapeshifter here on my comp. So, of course, you're up against other players. I'm up against Lord Catfis here. He has a Nobles comp. He has three Nobles here. You can see Vayne has actually picked up the Noble buff. She's got like a glowing, uh, like yellow aura next to her, and that means that she gets extra life back on hits. Noble is very strong if you can get the six Noble buff. It's weak if you only have the three Noble buff. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab Darius here. So let's talk a little bit about spending gold, right? You can see my gold total is right above the interface. I have seven gold. You get five gold at the beginning of every round, and then you get additional gold based on a couple different factors. One is your win streak bonus. If you win a bunch of games in a row or lose a bunch of games in a row, you will start getting additional money. The other way that you get additional gold is it's based on how much money you have uh, saved up in your, like basically in your bank account. So for every 10 gold you have saved up, you get one extra gold at the beginning of each round. And this is really, really important to understanding team fight tactics. So if you have 10 gold, you get plus one gold at the start of the next round. If you have 30 gold, you get plus three gold at the start of the next round. So building up a bank is really important because you get much more money if you can do that. So I'm over 10 gold right now, and that means I get plus one gold at the start of the next round. Now, the way you can see this, if you look on the left side of the screen, you'll see one little coin, and that indicates I'm at 10 gold. If you look at the right side of the screen, you can see how much money your uh, your opponent has saved up. So Drentil here has at least 20 gold that he's sitting on, and I actually just got destroyed in that round, so that was not good because he has more money saved up, and he also beat me. Um, so generally, the, the whole idea of the game is you want to get as much gold as possible while also making yourself strong enough that you're not losing rounds. Um, when you lose rounds, you lose health. You can see I have 94 health. Everybody starts at 100. And it doesn't matter how badly you lose. If it's a close loss, you don't lose very much health. You can see two of these guys are still going at it. If it's a close game, you don't lose much health. Like blue 22 is not going to lose much health there. But if you get destroyed, you lose a lot of health. And as the game goes on, you lose more and more health. So this is a carousel again. In the fourth round, you can see up at the top of the screen where it says stage 2-4. At the beginning of every fourth round, you get another carousel. And I'm looking, I was like, oh, cool, Rengar. I see Rengar with a BF sword, so let's just grab another BF sword there. Rengar's a good fit for my team because Rengar is wild plus assassin. I'm already running wild, so he will get that attack speed bonus. And assassin is a trait that gives you extra critical strike chance and extra critical strike damage. Now, I've gotten a ton of BF swords, and BF swords tend to synergize really well with assassins. So going some kind of assassin setup here seems like it would make a lot of sense for me. And so I'm just going to dump Warwick. I'm going to replace him with the Rengar. Uh, Warwick is a one-cost unit. Rengar is a three-cost unit. Generally, the higher the cost, the better the unit. So if I can get a uh, Rengar 2, then I'll be in good shape. Now the other thing you have to keep in mind is experience. Here I'm checking out what different items I could make with my saved up BF sword and my saved up uh, needlessly large rod. The other thing you need to keep in mind is experience. So right now I am level four. You see an XP bar down there in the bottom left hand corner. The, you get two experience for every single round. So you always get two XP every round. And then you also get experience by buying it. You can spend four gold to purchase four experience. So if I wanted to, I could spend eight gold and get eight XP, and that would take me to level five. And that would then allow me to put in another unit, because you can put in one unit for each level that you have. <clears throat> so that is something you can do. Now, um, it, it would be worth thinking about like leveling to five right here. The problem is I don't really have another unit to put in. There you go. You can see my passive income. 
and uh, win streak, or right now I'm actually on a loss streak, you get more gold the longer your win streak goes on, and you also get more gold the longer your loss streak goes on. I'm actually not getting what I'm looking for here. So like I've got, I'm running Shapeshifter and Wild. I've got the, th the three Shapeshifter buff, the two Wild buff. So I'm looking for more Shapeshifters. I'm looking for more Wild. And unfortunately, I'm not finding them. Like I have two Nidalees, but I don't have a Nidalee two star. I only have one Elise. I only have one Shyvana. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump this BF sword onto Nidalee here. The reason why I'm doing that is I'm planning to sell Nidalee later. And I'll transfer those items over to a different champion. But it's better to make use of them if you can instead of just having them sitting there unused. But of course, the thing is, you can't take the items off a champion once they're on them. You have to sell them. Now, once again, this is not going well. Migley has more money in the bank than I do, and he's also beating me quite badly here. Uh, the problem is, again, I have all one-star units. I don't have any two-star units. He was running a knight set up there. The ability of knights is knights block um, incoming damage. Like I think that they get da basically get damage reduction. So my guys really couldn't even hurt him there. Here I am going to level to 5 because I want to make sure I can beat this camp. I should also mention every, the last stage of every like round robin is a minion stage. So here 2-6, we're up against Krugs. Krugs can actually, they're actually quite strong. They can beat you if you uh, don't have a decent setup. So I actually needed to level there just to make sure that I don't lose to the Krugs. Unfortunately, once again, I failed to roll anything that useful. Again, I'm not finding anything else with Wild. I'm not finding anything else with Shapeshifter. So this setup that looked good earlier is not looking so good now. I, uh, I actually had the chance to get some Elises at the very beginning of the game, but I didn't end up picking them up. And now I really wish that I had those Elises. So note that the Krugs, every time you kill one Krug, the other two Krugs heal back to full. So like after I kill this second one, well the third one was full health already, but it would have gone back to full health. I actually haven't talked about what Shapeshifter does. Um, Shapeshifter, Shapeshifters get bonus health when they transform. So like Nidalee when she transforms will get extra health, Shivana when she transforms will get extra health. And I also got a um, Brawler's Glove there, which is really nice because this will make an Infinity Edge, and that is a really good Assassin item. What I really should have done here in retrospect is I should have just dumped one of these units and picked up the Zed that I had there because Zed is an assassin and just started going assassins. Instead I start rolling here. You can also pay two gold to refresh the list. Um, the whole idea is you want to minimize how much you have to re-roll because anytime you're re-rolling of course you're not picking up. Um, you know you're eating into your passive gold income. By re-rolling a bunch of times there I did eat into my income but I felt like I had to do something. I had to start rolling because my comp was just really weak and I was going to get destroyed here. Unfortunately, I still don't really have much of a comp. Like, um, that enemy Blitzcrank went ahead and pulled my Nidalee, who has my items, and she just died instantly. And I have the Warwick 2 now, which is better, but I still just get end up getting absolutely destroyed here. So, yeah, um, that went poorly and I lose even more health. So at this point, I'm like, you know, I really need to start making some other comp. The shapeshifter thing is not working, so I'm in the process of trying to switch over to something. I like randomly got a Darius here, a Darius two star. So like you can see, I'm selling the shapeshifters right now. I'm like, screw this. Let's transfer these items over. I'm gonna put the Infinity Edge on Rengar. I'm gonna put the Bloodthirster on Rengar. He now has three AD items. So if I can get Assassin buff in here, I'm like looking for an Assassin so I can get Rengar um, that Assassin buff. I need three Assassins to get that. I don't see that, but I do spot a Blitzcrank. And I'm not going to reroll this anymore because I don't want to go down under 30 gold. 30 gold gets me the plus 3 passive gold income. So I'm still like trying to make a comp here. I still don't have that much. Darius doesn't fit this comp. Um, Rengar still needs more assassins to pick up that assassin buff. Like he deals some damage there but not very much. And this comp beats me pretty badly. So once again, I'm still taking more damage. And I'm in the process of trying to transfer over to another comp here. Uh, if I were better at this game, I'd be able to transfer to a new comp faster. I still have to like think my way through this because I'm still very new. Yep, you can see I do get plus two gold for being on a five loss streak. But you don't really want to be on a five loss streak too much because I am down to 59 health. And I just can't afford to take too many more losses. I'm going to die if this keeps going on. So I need to switch over to something. And at this point, I'm like, all right... Shivana, I could maybe make Shivana 2 if I can get one more Shivana for that Shivana 2 star. But then I get the big hit. I get another Rengar, so I get up to Rengar 2. And now I'm like, alright, Shivana, maybe not so much. <coughs> what I have picked up though here is several Brawlers. So let me mention what Brawlers do. Brawlers give extra health for each Brawler. 
Um, so they tend to make a good front line set of champions. So like right now my two brawlers are Warwick and um, Blitzcrank. So they get extra health for having two brawlers. But I could go up to four brawlers or even six brawlers. And that's what I'm going to look to do. Now keep your eyes on Rengar in this fight. Rengar is now Rengar, he's now Rengar with uh, two stars. With these items, he can just start killing his way through the back lines. So he actually uh, misses his ult there. He's supposed to jump on someone, but with the Rengar 2-star, look at that damage dealt. Rengar, way more damage than anyone else in this game. And because I got one gold for winning, I can pick up Mordekaiser without eating into my income. And then I was like, wait a minute. Mordekaiser's a knight. Mordekaiser's phantom knight. I'm going brawlers here, not knights. Generally, you want to go brawlers or knights, but not both. Now, because my health is so low, I get to pick early on the carousel, and I see something I want very badly. And that is the Cho'Gath right there. Cho is a one of the strongest units you can pick up in the current version of Teamfight Tactics. Cho is a four gold unit, so he is a higher gold cost unit than anything I have right now. And he's also Void plus Brawler, which is a fantastic combination. With Cho, I can get up to three Brawlers, and then if I can get one more Brawler, I can get the four Brawler bonus, which will give me extra health on all my Brawlers. Plus, he even had a useful item. He had a Recurve Bow. Recurve Bow grants attack speed, and uh, there's a lot of nice items that build out of that. So at this point, I'm like, all right, Darius, you do not fit this comp. I'm going to get the Cho, and then I was like, wait, if I level a couple times... I can get up to uh, level 6, and then I can put in another unit, so I'm going to level here. There you go. I spent 12 gold to level, and now I put in Rek'Sai. And now, now we're starting to get a comp come together here. Now I've got four brawlers. So my four brawlers are Rek'Sai, Warwick, uh, Cho'Gath, and Blitzcrank. And then I sell those units to get back up to 30 gold. So the Shivana doesn't fit here. I'll be looking to replace the Shivana, but now I've got this extra health. So I'm up against this Nami Abuser. Nami Abuser is running Knight and Phantom. So the Knight is nice for blocking some of the incoming damage, and Phantom's useful. Phantom sets one of your units randomly to 100 health. Uh, an enemy unit randomly gets set to 100 health. But my comp is much stronger. I'm also level 6 against level 5. Note that Nami Abuser has no gold saved up, so Nami Abuser's in a bad place. That person's comp does not make a lot of sense, and they've spent all their gold. So at this point, I'm like, wait a minute. I can should probably ditch the Shivana. Shivana doesn't make any sense. I'm no longer running um, the shapeshifter setup, so at this point I'm like, yeah, I can probably get rid of her, and I've got a unit to put in. I can get if I can pick up Zed here, uh, that would get me another assassin. So sell, put in Zed, and now I just need one more assassin. I also get the ninja buff, which is kind of interesting. You get a buff if you have one ninja, and you get a buff if you have four ninjas, but you don't get the buff if you have two or three ninjas. So you really can only run one ninja or four ninjas. So anyway, Zed's going to hop into the back lines as well. That's kind of what assassins do. They jump into the back line at the start of every fight. By the way, see the big void spikes? That's Cho's ability. As you see Rengar finish off a person. Rengar is just going off at this point. He gets knocked up in the air, but he's killing everybody left and right. It's the uh, Rengar and Warwick show. Rengar's life-stealing off that Bloodthirster. Lucian's going to try to dodge, but nope, not enough. And look at that damage dealt. 7,000 for Rengar. Yep, he just carried me in that fight. So I really want to get another assassin in this mix just so that I can get Rengar the assassin buff. So we're going to pick up Rek'Sai, hoping to get for that Rek'Sai too. And there's our third assassin in Evelyn. Evelyn is demon assassin. So here I think to put in Rek'Sai, I was like, wait a minute, no, I just lost Brawler 4. Can't do that. This is the end of this particular stage. As I mentioned, the last state, last round in every stage is a minion round. So we're going to be up against the wolves. So I'm just going to move my guys together here. The wolves are going to jump on top of me. The wolves are basically assassins, so they're going to jump on top of me at the start of this. Just going to let them do that, and then we got to wait to see what items we get. I am, Note that I am back up to 50 gold, so I'm in a very comfortable position from Econ. And my comp is starting to come together. It's going to be assassins plus brawlers. I'm going to get more gold here. And what do I get? I actually pick up, I was like, oh, another Cho. Now I only need one more Cho for two star. And I pick up Akali. Akali's Ninja Assassin. She's just a better version of, of Zed. So I'm going to dump Zed and I'm going to replace with Akali. So I still got that same cup. And now I'm going to go ahead and level. I'm going to level all the way to seven. Spent some of my saved up gold, but not too much. And that allows me to put Eve in. And now I get the assassin buff. And now, now we're online here. I've gone from having a setup that doesn't make any sense to a comp that's actually pretty strong here. Four brawlers, three assassins. Still have that two wild buff. I also have the void buff as well. 
So what do these buffs do? Well, the Assassin buff is all Assassins get extra Critical Strike chance and extra Critical Strike damage. So now, now Rengar's really going to be going off because Rengar's got the Wild bu bonus for extra attack speed and he's also got the attack, the uh, Assassin bonus, so he gets extra crit chance. Note the Cho ult knocks everybody up in the air. Cho's frontlining and providing crowd control. And Rengar is just going to kill everything because that's he is my carry in this particular comp. So yeah, I've got the Brawlers to frontline for me and now I've got Rengar to do damage. And right there, I hit on the key unit I'm looking for. So note that I have found a Kai'Sa. Kai'Sa is a five cost unit. She is one of the big time carries. She is Void Ranger Assassin. With Void, uh, with the uh, Assassin, I'll be able to get the Assassin buff on her later in the game, and I'll be able to pick up the Void buff as well. What Void does is if you have two Void, it randomly picks out one of your Void units and they deal true damage. But if you can get up to four Void, all of the Void champs do true damage. So yeah, we are really coming together here on our comp. I am going to look to go, right now I'm going to look to Econ up to level 8, and then I'm going to try to put Kai'Sa in at level 8. Meanwhile, this guy, um, Catbus, he is level 7. He's got quite a bit of gold, but his comp is just not as strong as mine. Cho is continuing to just destroy everybody in terms of damage, and Rengar is killing people left and right. So yeah, we do a lot of damage to him. Now, Catbus has a lot of money. He's in a good economic shape. So he could be one of the people who sticks around longest if he spends his money wisely. But us, we're on 50 gold. We're actually on a 5 gold win streak. And boom, we hit one of our key units. Now we're at Cho'Gath 2 star. So at this point, I'm like, all right, I can just econ to level 8 right now. I don't need to roll for more units. Obviously, I'll try to hit on the, uh, the Rek'Sai 2 star if I can. I'll try to hit on the Evelyn 2 star if I can. Uh, I, I still have quite a few level 1 units. I, or I still have... Uh, one star Akali, one star Blitz, one star Rek'Sai, one star Evelyn. But um, I'm strong enough at this point, I should be able to Econ up to 8 without any trouble and then put Kai'Sa in at 8. Now look at Relax Bear, I'm going to check his comp. He just has Demon 4. Um, Demon is, Demons are attack, burn, mana. But he doesn't have any bonus damage and he doesn't have any bonus survivability. So he is just going to get absolutely destroyed here because his comp is far inferior to the one that I have. He's also only level 6, and look at his econ, he only has 20 gold saved up, so he is in bad, bad shape. And it looks like he overrolled for units. Look how many units are on his bench right there. You don't want to overroll for units like that. Alright, we've got another carousel. I am going to be one of the last ones to pick on the carousel. By the way, we've already lost our first player, Cold-Blooded is out. So I'm looking here, I'm looking here, and I'm like, hmm, I could go for that Kha'Zix and get another BF sword, so why not? I'm running Assassins, BF Swords synergize really well with Assassin comps, so I'll just go ahead and take that, and honestly, even the Kha'Zix is not awful, because I could get, um, Kha'Zix is Void Assassin, so I could get Void buff from him, I could get Assassin buff from him, so even the Kha'Zix is not terrible, but I believe that I just go ahead and sell the Kha'Zix here, as you see the other players grabbing items off the carousel. But yeah, I'm on a six game, a six game winning streak right now, so I've gotten a lot of gold off of that. Uh, I also do make a mistake here. I should definitely pick up the Vi. Why? Because Vi is Brawler, and I'm running Brawlers. She would take me closer to six Brawlers. I could also, if I don't get other Brawlers, I could like replace the Blitzcrank with her. I could also potentially look to replace the Warwick eventually. Now, Warwick is giving me Wild. Like, the Wild buff is going to Rengar, so I have to be careful about that. But um, Warwick is a one gold unit, whereas Vi is a three gold unit, so Vi is a much better unit. If I could get like a Vi 2, it would probably be worthwhile to swap out um, Warwick for Vi. So right now we're up against this team, I just highlighted it, Phantom Knight Hextech. So I mean that's not terrible, but by this point in time in the game you want to have more than this. Um, Nami Abuser also is only level 6, and Nami Abuser has no money saved up at all, so Rengar is continuing to just murder this enemy team. <coughs> You can see Rengar did 3,000 damage once again. So yeah, Nami Abuser has not been able to manage their economy correctly. And at this point, I'm at 66 gold. I'm on a 7-game winning streak, so I'm just going to econ up to 8. I was like, alright, I'm at 54 gold. We'll just drop down to 46. We want to try to keep this win streak intact if we can. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the Kai'Sa. This does take me up to 4 Assassins, so I could drop an Assassin here at some point. And you see me picking up the um, you see me picking up the Cassidens here just because I want to um, have another Void unit ready to put in. Yeah, you see me highlight the Void. Um, I want to get that Void bonus. I need another Void unit, so I'm starting to get the Cassidens. I should actually get Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix is a better fit than Cassidens for this, but I'm going with what I have right now. 
Anyway, this comp up here from Blue22, Blue has Knight 4, Imperial 2. Again, that's that's okay. And in fact, he actually is going to do surprisingly well. The reason for that being is he actually landed the Imperial buff on Draven. So what Imperial does is, Imperial 2 is one of the Imperial units does double damage. Imperial 4 is all Imperial units do double damage. He only had uh, Imperial 2, but he got the buff on Draven which is the unit he wanted to get it on. And um, so that's largely why that worked out so well for him. He also got off a good hex tech at the start of that round too. So we do lose a round, which is unfortunate because it ends our seven game winning streak. We were actually getting three extra gold per round because we were on such a long winning streak, but we're still at 50 gold. We are at level eight. If you notice that guy, blue 22, he was only level six. A little bit surprising why we lost actually. Uh, he just got off a good Draven round. And of course this is another minion round. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look to see what items we get. Um, you never want to roll down right before a minion round because a minion round is like basically a free win. So usually you want to spend your money after a minion round, not before. We actually end up getting quite a few items here, including a Nico, which I'll talk about in a minute. But I can make some items. I'm looking at what I can make. Redemption's not bad. Frozen Heart is a pretty nice tank item, though. So I'm going to go ahead and make Frozen Heart on show. This will reduce the attack speed of nearby enemies, and then Morel Namakon, which applies a healing debuff, just as it does in regular League of Legends. So I'm going to put these on Cho, and now my Cho is super duper strong. He's going to lower the attack speed of all nearby enemies, and his big AoE ult is also going to apply a healing debuff. Uh, I also hit Rek'Sai 2. I didn't even realize that at first. I was like, oh, Rek'Sai 2. Now what does Nico do? Nico as an item gives you an extra copy of a champion. So if I am to get one more um, Kai'Sa, I can use Nico and get a two-star Kai'Sa. So I just need one more, and I'm going to be looking for that Kai'Sa as this game goes on. So this person we're up against is Brawler 4, Void 2, Glacial 2. Um, not terrible, but the problem is Migli's only level 6, and I'm level 8. I have two more units. He's actually got a lot of money. He just needs to spend his money. He should be leveling and re-rolling. Like you can see, Migli's got 50 gold in the bank. There is no reason to be sitting on that much gold when he's down to 12 health. He needs to spend his money. <coughs> if he doesn't spend it, he's just going to be eliminated with 50 gold in the bank. Meanwhile, I'm not seeing anything here, so I'm just going to continue leveling. I'm going to try to go up to 9, which is the max level. Um, I would be rolling here. It's just that I'm not really in any danger. Like, I've got plenty of health. I seem to be winning almost every single round. I'm not really feeling threatened. If some of these other enemy comps were stronger, I would start rolling here, looking for stuff I'm missing. Like, I still only have a Kali 1 star. I only have Blitz 1 star. I only have Eve 1 star. I only still have the Kai'Sa 1 star. I'm really looking for that Kai'Sa. Now this game we're up against Lord Kappas. Lord Kappas has Gunslingers and Blade Masters. This is a comp that has a lot of damage, but the problem is he has no front line. So like he outputs a lot of damage, but he just dies so fast. And in fact, you can see that's what's happening here. You really need some kind of units that can front line. Uh, the Blade Master means your sword units get extra attacks. The Gunslinger means your gun units get extra attacks. But of course, if you have a team full of like Tristanas and um, What's some of the other units that are have those abilities and like Aatroxes and whatnot? Um, you're just not tanky enough. You just died too fast. So he did a little damage, but he just got shredded in turn. And of course, he was also a lower level as well. So um, yeah, you can't go. You can't really run um, Blade Master plus uh, Gunslinger. It just doesn't work. You have no survivability. Whereas our comp, we've got we've got the Brawlers for extra health, like we've got the Cho and the Rek'Sai and the Warwick for our front line, and then for our damage, we're gonna have we've got the uh, Akali, we have the Rengar, and then we have the Kai'Sa, uh, who Kai'Sa is gonna be dashing around. We just need to find one more Kai'Sa so we can use that Nico and then get Kai'Sa too. But uh, otherwise, I'm just you know leveling here. I will put in the Kassadin at level 9, and then that will give me the Void buff on all my uh, units. Like right now, Cho actually got the Void buff, so Cho will do true damage. And yeah, that Cho ult just did a lot of damage. Nami Abuser, only level 6, has no money left over. Nami Abuser does have some 3 star units, like you can see it was 3 star uh, Fiora there, but not enough. And Cho carried that fight. Why? Because he got the Void buff and dealt true damage. Remember how Migli had 50 gold in the bank? Well, Migli apparently didn't spend that because Migli just got eliminated as well. So at this point, we've got another carousel. I actually still get to pick relatively early. I'm looking here and I'm like, ooh, I see 
a, uh, I see that Gnar there with the, I actually can't remember the name of this item. I actually think I made a mistake. I think I should have gone for the Rengar with the Cursed Blade because that Cursed Blade would have been a really good item choice on Kai'Sa. Instead, I went for a more defensive item. The item I have here, which name is escaping me, unfortunately, apologies. It, uh, it gives you a lot of magic resistance. So it's a good defensive item to put on Kai'Sa, but I think the Cursed Blade would have been better because that's attack speed plus magic resistance. So anyway, I will go ahead and put that on Kai'Sa. And I'm just going to go ahead and level to 9. And then I'm going to look to put an item. I'm like, oh, geez, double Swain? Now, Swain doesn't really fit my comp, but Swain is another 5-cost unit. There we go. Now we pick up Void. So you can see basic attack and spells deal true damage. So now Kai'Sa will deal true damage. Yeah, you see the Void buff kick in. See how they're glowing purple. And now I'm just rolling. I'm looking for more items. Like, I'm at max, X I'm at max XP, so I don't really need to save money. And I'm going to go ahead and hit on a Kali right there. So that this will be a Kali 3. I just have to wait for the next battle to get it. Uh, this is Lord Capus once again. Oh my god, look at that show alt. So much damage. Remember, he's the Gunslinger plus Blade Master person? Well, again, he has no survivability, and you see it there. So farewell, Lord Capus. Uh, yeah, see how Cho did so much damage? Again, he does true damage with his ultimate now. And he's got that Marilla Namacon to apply it. So we are in great shape. All we need to do is hit our Kaisa 2. Just need one more Kaisa so we can use that Nico, And I'm just going to be rolling for it. So I've actually got... Oh, and see, there is the Akali, too. So now we've made Akali 2-star. And there's another Akali, not that we need it at this point in time. And here's Vise, and I make a mistake. I should be picking up these Vise. I could have had Vi 2-star by now. Um, for whatever reason, I actually forgot that I only had uh, a 1-star Blitz in the corner. I think I just forgot about the Blitz down there. But I'm still looking for Kai'Sa. Instead, I get Swain. I was like, oh, geez, Swain 2-star. Okay. So now we need to figure out what comes out of this comp. I also did make Eve's 2-star as well. So at this point, I was like, um, what can I take out of this comp? And I'm sitting here, and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, and I need to do this round first. So we're up against Blue 22. Now look, Blue 22 is sitting on 50, uh, on 50 gold, but he only has 7 health left, so he really should be spending his money here in order to level up so he can put more units in, but he doesn't. And so Blue also gets illuminated with tons of money in the bank that he did not end up spending, which is, again, is a pretty big mistake. So now we get another minion round. I probably should have waited for the minion round before I rolled back there. Like I said, that was a mistake. And I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, I was like, ah, wait a minute, it's the Eve I can take out. Because note that I've got four assassins, that means I have one more assassin than I actually need. I don't need four assassins, so I can pull Eve out of my cop and put in Swain. Uh, Swain two star is much better than Eve two star. So we'll pull her out of the cop and replace her with the Swain. I realized it up. I think I didn't realize it until after this round actually started. But that's what we're going to end up doing here. Again, Swain does not fit this comp, and Swain does not have Swain items here. Like, Swain needs items that have either additional mana on them, so he gets his ult off faster, or has additional ability power on them. So I don't have the right items for Swain, unfortunately. Swain can actually be almost unkillable if he gets the right items. But Swain 2 is still better than having the Eve 2, so we'll go ahead and make that switch. I get a Phantom Dancer, where it dodges all critical strikes, and it also has extra attack speed on it. So Kai'Sa, attack damage, attack speed, both good on her. And there we go, so there we get the Swain. Didn't actually end up giving us anything. Like I said, Swain's not a great fit for the comp, but he's just very, very strong, so we go ahead and put him in anyway. And uh, at this point, we're just rolling for that uh, Kai'Sa 2. We also are rolling for Blitz 2 or, um, or Vi 2. I need one of them because I need a brawler for that last spot to maintain four brawlers. Unfortunately, I'm not finding them, and I've actually done quite a few rounds here. But we're going to be up against Relax Bear. Relax Bear has Demon, and he also had, uh, I think, Blade Master. Unfortunately, he is only level 7, and he has no money in the bank, so he has no, he has no economy left. So he's going to take a ton of damage. Doesn't quite get finished off there but does go down to 4 health. So it looks like it's probably going to be me against Drentil here for the final two, and we'll see which one of us can top the board. I am still looking for this Kai'Sa. I'm like, where are you, Kai'Sa? I've been level 9 for a while. I should have spotted you. I've spotted every other 5-cost unit at least once. Most of them multiple times. Yep, I'm like, Nico, I've got the Nico. I just need one more Kai'Sa in order to pick up the Kai'Sa 2, which is much stronger. Yep, got the BF Sword, Phantom Dancer, Dragon's Claw, that's the name. So Dragon's Claw gives you a ton of magic resistance. It is a good, pretty good item on Kai'Sa if you want a defensive item. 
But I think the Cursed Blade would have been a little bit better because that would be attack speed plus MR. All right, so I'm going to be up against Drentil. Now, Drentil has a bunch of three-star units. He's actually only level seven, but he's got a three-star Volibear and he's got a three-star Rek'Sai. <coughs> so he has ended up getting... going. He is only level seven, but he's gone for the three-stars. And this is actually a really close fight, but fortunately, the uh, Rek'Sai... Not Rek'Sai, the Kai'Sa is kind of going off. Uh, Kai'Sa's ability is she when she fills up her mana bar, she dashes across the screen and gets a big shield. So again, you can make your Kai'Sa almost unkillable if she gets the right items. Just need to stack that attack speed and a little bit of survivability. Attack speed, attack damage, and some survivability. So once again, I have not gotten a Blitz or a Vi or a Kai'Sa. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really, I'm really striking out here. And it's it actually does matter now that it's down to just me and Drentil. It actually does matter that I'm not hitting these units because the longer the game goes on, the more time he gets to roll for three-star units, which is what he's doing. Like, look, he's almost got a three-star Vi. He's got... He only needs one more Vi to get three-star Vi. So I really don't want this game to keep going on. I guess that's why I was having trouble finding Vi's. I got off a great Cho alt there, though. So that's pretty good. Uh, he has his own Cho, though. But um, the fact that I got off such a strong Cho alt puts me in good shape. But not good enough as I end up losing and drop down to 27 health so we get another carousel here and this is where i end up making another mistake i probably should have gone for either the uh hurricane would have been a good item choice here or i could have gone for like he actually ends up going for the spatula i believe that allows him to make another force of nature on his side but i go for the yumi that makes an item into a sorcerer but that's not really very helpful here i was thinking i could get the sork buff but i actually miscounted i only have one sork Yumi gets me to two Sorks, but that doesn't do anything. I need a third Sork. Arguably, I could have looked to put in another Sork here. Like, I could have tried to put in Aurelian Soul, maybe. But I don't know who I would have taken out to put Aurelian Soul in. Um, like, I could have dropped down to two Brawlers, and maybe that would have been worthwhile doing. Like, take out the Blitz and put in Aurelian Soul to get three Sorks. That would take me down to just two Brawlers, but that might be worthwhile to do. Anyway, feud for thought in the future. So instead, I did lose that last round to um, Drentil. I get off another good Cho ult here, and it looks like Rengar is still doing his thing. Is Kaisa still alive? Yes, Kaisa's still alive, although she did just get hooked by Blitzcrank there. But this time, this fight goes much better. We are dealing with the Volibear 3-star, but we're going to be able to finish him off, and we're going to deal some damage to Drentil. So the game goes on, still continuing, and now finally, finally, there it is. We get the Kaisa. I'm going to Nico Kaisa, and there we go. Kaisa 2 star. So this should be enough to win the game from here. I've hit on the Kaisa 2 star. My comp is basically made. I, if I could just get one more Vi for this last spot, or one more Blitz. Now, the problem is, all the Vi's are being hogged by Drentil. Drentil's got a. a He's got like eight buys over there. I believe... Oh, and, and I should mention this. The champions are shared by all players. So like the fact that he has so many buys does matter. I believe that there's only like... I don't know. I think there's like a dozen of each champion. So like if he has a ton of buys, I am less likely to get a buy myself. But I've made my Kai'Sa too, so I should be able to win here. Like I am able to get another good show ult. And if you watch Kaisa, like, look at her dashing around there, just hitting person after person. She's in no particular danger here. She's trying to go after that three-star Rek'Sai. They're just going to dash again, get another shield. And so, yeah, we're able to win that. And at this point, I'm like, all right, Drentil's still only level seven. I should be able to beat him. But unfortunately, we get another minion round here, which is poorly timed because I'm pretty sure I could beat him if we were to have another round here. But we're going to get another minion round. I'm going to get Ionic Spark, which is not a great item for him. And you actually notice he's actually going to hit the three-star buy. And that's like, oh, that's not good. He just got another three-star unit. So he now has three three-star units. He's got the buy, the Rek'Sai, and the Volibear. So the fact that this is dragged out for so long is actually not good. This is a very long teamfight tactics game, by the way. Most of them do not make it to Rift Herald, stage 6-6. Six, six. So it's not going to last much longer, though. I'm going to go ahead and I was thinking about what should I put this on? Well, typically people put the Ionic Spark on Blitzcrank. It synergizes well with Blitzcrank's pull ability, which he always gets to do at the start of every battle. So I'll go ahead and do that, even though I don't know if that was the ideal target to put it on. Maybe it would have been better on one of these other units. I can't put it on Kai'Sa because she already has three items. Three items is the maximum. So I put it on Blitz, but I'm still looking here for other units. So there's another Blitzcrank. 
but I still need, like, I'm still trying to make, I just need one more Vi or one more Blitz to get them up to two stars, and that, at that point, my comp is effectively made. Like I said, I might have been better to go into Sorks here at the end since I took that Yumi, but probably the smarter decision would have been not to pick up the Yumi at all. Um, I could have picked up something else that would have been more useful for my comp. Like I said, Swain does not fit this comp. I just have him in here because he's a generically strong unit. Uh, and what I was doing there was spacing up my units because Drentil has Hextech. That takes out um, items at the beginning of the game, at the beginning of each round. So I was moving my units so the Hextech would hopefully only hit one unit and not two. Now, in this particular fight, things are not going very well. Now that he's gotten that additional um, uh, three-star unit, he's actually tearing me up pretty good here. So Kaisa is doing her best. Note that Kaisa is the last one still alive, but she's getting CC'd. And I was like, uh-oh, am I dead here? No, I had enough health that I survived with six. <clears throat> but clearly, if I lose one more round, the game is over. I was trying to make a Pantheon 2 here. Pantheon's another 5 cost unit. Now, Panth doesn't really fit with this comp either. But, uh, so then I was like, I'm not going to get the Panth th uh, 2 star, so let's just roll. Give me that Vi, give me that Blitzcrank. But, sadly, uh, no. We do not end up getting either. So, nope, didn't end up making it. So, you know... As great as this was, it looks like I'm going to fall just short here. And, uh, you know, like I said, if I lose this to Drentil, that's it. And we're done with the round. He's got all those three-star units. And I do have one of my units get separate at the start of the fight. But as it turns out, I'm actually going to get a really good Cho ultimate right there that knocks them up. And, hey, Rengar's still alive. Kai'Sa's still alive. And, hey, you know, RNG's working in our favor. All of our damage deals are still alive. And, boom, the last tick of damage hits... And it's just barely enough to finish off Drentil. So we actually did top the lobby. We end up winning this one, which, you know, is something that should happen. I, I did get the Kai'Sa 2-star, so I should actually win if I get the Kai'Sa 2-star. So there you go. I'm going to put up a screenshot here of what the endgame looked like. I'm actually going to put that, pull that up here. Now, one disappointing thing about Teamfight Tactics is there's still no replay mode. So I actually have to record. I uh, recorded this while playing and then did the commentary afterwards so it's unfortunate that there's no replay like I, I couldn't move the camera around while this is going on but uh ended up going well so i mean the real key to that game was noticing i was trying to play sh wild shapeshifters it didn't work i had items that were good for assassins so i switched it up went into brawlers plus assassins and mvp of this game was definitely the rengar who carried me through those weak middle levels the other big play of the game was picking up the cho off of the carousel when i was um you know like midway through the game i was still low on health i was able to grab the cho and uh that really helped flip my game around too got some nice items i could put on the cho then went into the um the void buff at the end of the game for kaisa so yeah i mean this game wouldn't have been as close as it was if i had landed void earlier like if i had gotten kaisa earlier in the game the kaisa 2 i could have gotten kaisa much earlier it was a little bit unlucky in that respect uh, this wouldn't have been even close if i'd gotten kaisa like five rounds earlier but in any case it ended up being an exciting game so hope you enjoyed this i'll probably end up streaming some more team fight tactics we'll see if i put some games up on youtube but uh hope you guys enjoyed this and got a little flavor of some team fight tactics until next time hope you guys are having a great week take care see you guys again soon